Hi, Dirk. Uh, thanks for coming along today. Um, Mr. Specs has been a great success story. Uh, you're now the largest independent online eyewear business in Europe with over 100 million of revenues. Tell me about the opportunity that you saw when you founded the business. It's, now, it's going to be 10 years in next month. Um, so in 2007, when we looked at the op like to, um, to find an idea for our business, we scanned several e-commerce markets. And um, we ended up with the optical market, uh, the optical retail market, um, because it's an exist it was an existing market back then, 30 billion in Europe only, and very high margins. Um, and what, because we didn't have money back then, we also looked at, I would say, inventory light models. And um, that basically, uh, for us, uh, was speaking for the eyewear market. And the second thing is that we also looked at competition. So nobody back then we're selling glasses online and doing such a crazy thing. And, um, and we also thought, okay, it's not a very obvious category um, that you would sell online. Um, but we said, okay, it's, it's worth a try. And if we succeed, then probably there's not going to be a lot of copycats because it's quite hard. And it's you know, 20, 30 billion of revenue in, in Europe alone. Yeah. And I guess the thesis is a reasonable chunk of that is going to go online and become a pretty sizable online market. Yeah, so the, the, the markets are in very different stages still. So you have, for instance, the UK market or the German market, where you know, 10 years later, roughly 10% of the single vision glasses are sold online already. Um, progressive lenses, which are the more complicated ones, take a little bit longer. And then there are also markets which are still very early, like the Spanish or French market um, in Europe. So it's very different. It's, you know, in many countries, it's a medical product. You need a prescription. You may be on an, under insurance. You know, for glasses, you need an eye test and sometimes fitting. How do you manage to do all this online, you know, doing it through your PC or your, yeah. your iPhone? Honestly, it took us quite a while to understand how to sell glasses online, right? So in the beginning, um, we understood that contact lenses is a commodity product. Um, we sold this on a very frequent basis to our customers. And um, through that, um, we had a lot of repetitive purchases with our customers and were able to build the brand Mr. Specs, although we haven't sold a lot of glasses. And then I would say we did a lot of research on the customer side and um, it took us, as I said, two to three years to really crack the um, market for prescription glasses. And um, what we found out, besides basically all the features that you have, like virtual try-ons or we in basically invented the home trial. So I think eight or nine years ago, we offered that we ship uh, for free up to four frames. You can keep them for 10 days, try them on, and then uh, decide whatever you want and ship it back, and we provide you the final product. But the, the single most important thing is uh, basically if customers want to buy a medical product, is really about trust. Um, so we needed to build around uh, basically uh, the trust factor from Mr. Specs. Um, how do we? Uh, enable the customers to trust us. So it was about hiring a lot of opticians. Um, we built up a, in, uh, like a doctor network with independent opticians that serve for eye exams uh, for our customers. And you now have, what, over 500? It, it's close opticians. to 600 in the yeah. German, Austria, Switzerland, and Netherlands. Um, and we're yeah. going to do more in the Nordics uh, soon. Um, and the other thing is uh, we really b needed to build the brand above the line. So just pure online marketing didn't work um, or wasn't sufficient enough. So we invested from day one, or like year one on in TV advertising. And um, it helped us to build the brand and the credibility. And um, for now, we are, I would say, Europe's largest online retailer for glasses. And, and so the on. thing that struck me is that that TV advertising has not only built trust, but it's also built an incredible brand. I mean, in the countries where yep. you do TV advertising, you're now yep. the third most recognized eyewear brand yep. in those countries, which has created a, a you yeah. know, tremendous yeah. trust. I would say over the time, we also learned how to make uh, TV commercials um, more sophisticated and how to program them and how to measure it. So we measure basically our success um, for every individual TV spot, plus we measure also our brand awareness and the aided brand awareness of Mr. Specs in the core markets, the Dach region, where we do TV, it's between 50 and 70%. Yeah, that's fantastic. So you raised some venture capital. You know, Describe what you've achieved with that in terms of mm. scale of business, countries of operation, mm. some of the things that you've done <coughs> over the last yeah. you know, five years or so. Um, so we're focusing on 10 countries in Europe um, with dedicated websites. And um, I would say the, the biggest achievement for myself is 
that uh, we always had the uh, vision to make the eyewear market more transparent and um, uh, especially on the pricing side um, and to offer basically customers like the 30 to 40 percent saving and we convinced now close to three million customers basically to buy with us um, uh, and they are very happy if you look at all the consumer ratings basically I think that is uh, the biggest achievement besides I would say building a company with a really good culture for externals it's maybe different things right so we opened a big warehouse in November um, last year and we also opened retail stores and after nine years in business even people you know for a very long time they come to you after nine years and they say oh now it's gonna get a real company Right, so it's, it's, it's a very interesting thing and, uh, uh, that you still need. Or physical uh, assets. Physical sure. assets are yeah. impressing a lot of yes. people much more than digital ones. Yes. So. Certainly when I saw the warehouse, it was, it was a bit of a, a takeaway moment in terms of, <laughs> wow, this is, you really realize the scale of the operation yeah. when you see that, that facility. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, so some of the, the other thing is around the, the opticians. I mean, it's been yeah. a quite an interesting model that there are, a couple of big chains in, in DAC region, but there's, there's 10,000 independent opticians, yeah. and you really give them yeah. the inventory, the marketing, the branding to allow them to compete with these big chains. You, you enable those, those independent opticians to actually retain in the market. Yes. I mean, honestly, we, we've been pitching to VCs in 2010 already that we want to open bricks and mortar stores. Nobody liked that back then, so we needed to invent a model to have an asset light multi channel strategy. And um, we came up basically with this partner optician model and um, we convinced them to work with us on a more or less revenue share basis. And uh, it, it was one part of the component um, where we were able to basically build even more trust on the consumer side and it helped a lot. Today, roughly 20, 30% of the consumers that buy prescription glasses use that and we pay to these opticians a fee that's seven digit each year. We've seen a lot in the press around online businesses starting to go into stores. Uh, you know, even Amazon now has their own stores. Yep. Um, you know, we've done the partner network. Uh, we've now started to open our own stores mm -hmm. with a, a model that we've developed, an omni-channel software platform and an award-winning store format. Tell us a bit more about the store network that you're envisaging for Mr. Spex mm -hmm. over the next few years. So yeah, we opened up our first retail store February last year in Berlin. Um, in a very high frequent uh, location and um, we try to use a lot of I would say things that we learned from the on online world how to sort uh, the glasses um, how to seamlessly interact basically and um, build a store format um, where we won a lot of awards for the interaction with the consumer and um, I would say for now we're trying just to duplicate what we've done last February um, in a lot of other cities um, because we uh, what we see is that we um, are able to attract a lot of new customers by our stores, um, but they know us. So basically the stores are break even the first quarter and, um, and highly profitable in year one. Uh, why? Because we have built up this brand awareness um, of 60-70% in Germany and um, it is also, I would say, a nice good looking um, uh, concept and therefore um, we can imagine doing this for a little bit longer and um, uh, meaning rolling out maybe 50 or 100 stores in Germany alone because I think that's the potential in these locations where we are today and then we may go to maybe smaller locations or slightly different ones. One thing that was very interesting when we looked at the stats of the stores and we measure the stores very much like the website we look at through traffic we look at conversion rates all these sort of things so it's very analytical but one thing that was very interesting was actually the number of new customers coming into yep. the store that we hadn't seen before so it's interesting that the stores were acting as a as an alternative channel attracting a different demographic of customer yes and in fact older higher spending mm -hmm. and one interesting thing was then what happened online with those customers exactly so what um we try to do with the stores is really to educate the customers how to buy online so they use basically the same interface that we have on our website and everybody that leaves has exactly the size of their glasses, the shape, but also the prescription data. And we see that over 50% of the repurchase from the customers that we get from the stores are done actually online. 
Well, that's, uh, thanks very much, Dirk, for, for telling us uh, you know, a brief story about Mr. Specs. Um, you know, I'm very excited about the next phase of, of it in terms of the country expansion and the further store, store rollout. And in particular, I look forward to seeing the first store here in London. So uh, you know, thanks very much for coming we'll come along. come soon. All right, so. thanks. Thanks,